Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the financial value of Unstable. I will also focus on the lands themselves as a individual buy. I'm going to largely ignore every other card because it is not playable. And places are already telling commander players that they don't want these cards because it's too strange, right? Like cheaty face is kind of strange. You're encouraging younger players to hide cards and cheat. So, okay, and that's not even the, the craziest one, right? That's the most uh, easy one to explain in this video. The biggest, biggest problem is Walmart. So, I don't know, I haven't talked to any of my distributor friends or my friends who own game stores, but I would bet that maybe a game store gets one round of these if it doesn't do well, but how many rounds does Walmart get? They have a lot of inventory. They're still selling Dragon Maze at my local Walmart. Like, that's the reality of it. They still have foil shards of Alora. Now, it's very expensive, and the value is kind of met on the, the packs. They have a lot of old stuff. In fact, one of these holding companies, they actually create these magic mystery boxes with old, quote, old packs. I could see Unstable being part of this old pack. So, uh, I don't like box values. I don't like booster pack values. I just don't like the set from an MTG Finance perspective. But if you enjoy this type of funny type of deal, all means buy it. The art looks great. It's just an overall fun set. But if you want to hold on to boxes and assume that they would go up in value, the answer is no, 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 no. Walmart has this. I have never seen a product that Walmart carries. And by definition, Walmart wants to carry a product they have lots of, right? It's not, it's like cliff bars. They probably have millions of cliff bars. And it's the same exact cliff bar. Well, they understand that as well. Now these mystery boxes, they're getting a lot smarter and people are not as good as people were not able to game it or weigh it. I mean, there were stories that people were weighing these mystery stuff. Yeah, I mean, pretty crazy. Regardless, Walmart, Target, Barnes & Noble, Toys R Us, anywhere that they carry, Walgreens, anywhere that carries Unstable, there's gonna to be too much of it. There will be way too much Unstable out in the market, even if there's only one, quote, print run, because I don't think the print runs apply to Walmart. And the reason it doesn't apply to Walmart is they're always putting Dark Ascension and actually they had an apocalypse pack in the day. Like not this year, but in 2016, a YouTuber had purchased one of these free packs and at the bottom we were expecting Dark Ascension, but it was apocalypse. So we're talking about large supplies, large unknown numbers of packs, but they definitely have this pre-made product. Any product, in my opinion, that can be purchased at Walmart has no chance to go up. Now, let's talk about the individual lands. The individual lands will likely never be the cost of a pack. So if you assume a pack costs between 3 to $4, for this exercise, we'll assume MSRP at $4, then being guaranteed a land means that that card cannot possibly be worth four dollars because if it was worth more than four dollars then there would never be any packs to open every store would just open every single pack every person would go to every walmart every walgreens every target and buy every single pack because they would be getting be getting value now that is retail value when we talk buy listing it's a little different so if you enjoy these lands, yeah, go ahead. $2 is not a bad price. But if you are expecting this to be to make money, and this is the core issue I have with most of NTG Finance. They don't get it because they've never sold cards before. They just make BS up. For you to sell this at $4, this has to be an $8 card. Maybe more. So when the original... Zendikar for our arts hit a dollar, dollar fifty. I could only sell them to Strike Zone, my local game store, for twenty five cents or twenty cents, five, and that had to be unsorted because there were John Avon lands, I believe, or some artist that was famous, and their lands were a little bit more, so it had to be unsorted. A good mix of islands, a good mix of planes, and so on. 
is this going to hit eight dollars that's the question you have to ask because it's not the retail value you have to look at it's the buy list value and that is the biggest pet peeve i have is when people say oh i invested in i'll talk about filia filia is a real deal she went from two to twenty like go check she's twenty dollars right now she's fifteen dollars like tcg lows twenty dollars like in some websites she's the real deal uh, but for her to be able to be sold at ten dollars she has to hit around 20 where she is currently she's currently where you can probably get 10 maybe nine you probably get 10 credit easy maybe nine cash just because a card retail is four dollars doesn't mean you can sell it for four dollars so if you were speculating on it this would be a very poor speculation because what you're saying is you want the, this card has to go up to eight dollars who believes this card is going to go up to eight dollars even the unglued ones which is decades ago on a much smaller print did not isn't even eight dollars today for most of them so how is anyone going to make money from this like i don't think you can make money from the boxes and the packs because of walmart i think that's a very clear example of walmart being a behemoth in the market this is not some short printed product this is a walmart product Walmart is now pre accepting pre-orders right now. And Walmart doesn't want to sell you one or two. They want to sell you a bunch of these, right? Um, okay, so back to these singles. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't see how you would ever make money back in the next five years. Maybe in 10 years. Like it, it's, I mean, it's still a beautiful land. Very beautiful. But there's just way too much of this stuff being printed and at the end of the day if you wanted to make money on it man you i mean it would be difficult now i know what you're saying maybe i can buy in at two and then if it hits four i break even well it's called loss uh, cost of opportunity so instead of investing in a philia you put it in this land just to break even so whenever i make a big buy philia has been the I'll make another video. When people were buying Seance, I was buying Filia. Same set, same color, tiny difference. And Filia has to hit 20 for me to be like, all right, that was a good return on investment. She has to, from two, she has to hit 20. And I'll show you. I mean, I've already shown you. I purchased her at two. I have the receipts. I have all the TCG player receipts. And I'll show you. And this is pretty crazy when... I think of how many failures I have, but I could think of how many failures I could get. So when I'm looking at speculation, I'm looking at it very different from most people. I'm looking at it as, can I sell this for more than I bought it? And is that quote profit worth my time? And does it, is it worth the cost of opportunity to put the money in something else? So it turned out failure was a real deal. And I should have not bought any Liliana's at Veils, although that did very well. Snaps, I should not have bought anything but Filia. That would have been the optimal play. Now you do diversify your risk, and it's kind of like a mutual bond or a mutual portfolio. But anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.